the people that I've met today are clearly some of the brightest people and the most curious people and energetic people I've met in quite some time. It's very impressive to see all of you in one space so excited about the possibility about what is to come. When John introduced himself to me the first time not that long ago, a couple weeks ago, we got on the subject matter of what I did in fighter pilot aviation, and he said, hey, would you be interested in coming and talking to a group of people about AR? I said, what's AR? That was two weeks ago. And he said, well, you actually use it. So I said, define it for me a little bit more clearly. And when he did, I said, oh, yeah, I've been using that for about 25 years. So now you know I'm the dumbest person in the room. <laughs> um, but AR is amazing in fighter aircraft. We're doing almost 1,000 miles an hour. Typically, we're going at each other, so the closure rates are up to 2,000 miles an hour. So when you're 40 miles apart, two minutes later, you are next to each other. In that world, the rudimentary AR that I grew up with allowed you know, synthetic aperture to be placed around the opposite aircraft so I knew where they were at range when I locked them up with the radar. But that was limited by the HUD, that heads-up display. It's about a 6-inch by 12-inch display that gave incredible information that you used to have to actually look down inside the cockpit to find bits and pieces and put it all together and make a judgment call. But that all got put in the HUD. And they actually called fighter pilots who grew up with HUD babies, because that's all the place they want to look was in the HUD, never look at anything else. But subsequent technology has brought on where AR is now displayed through a, a system called the Hemet. Think of the Google Glass, and it sits off to your side. Uh, it will take the technology that's sitting inside the aircraft to include pictures and display and put them down into pieces that allow you to overlay data. We're in a biz business of incredible precision on both sides of the equation. You don't ever want to get it wrong. Subsequently, uh, finding a target in a uh, close air support scenario where there are enemy and friendly forces on the ground and the civilian people involved could, could be very, very challenging. We'd spend a significant amount of time talking to each other. And I'd uh, make it analogous to I spy with my little eye, and you'd have that kind of conversation until you actually both collated the, the target. With AR, they're putting in that Google Glass. I just look in a general direction, and there is a color-coded system with that that shows you exactly where that target is. And the technology is so good that I could actually put the cursor that is now in my head as I look out in any direction that I want, and I can actually put that cursor over that target one mechanical action inside the cockpit and all weapon systems and images go to that target set. Really incredible. What excited me today was listening to Mann talk about the electromagnetic spectrum and how he kind of manipulated that. Because I think there's a future capability there in displaying that to the fighter pilot as they look through this system. The system that we currently use is called Jahimix, the Joint mount, uh, Mounted Helmet Cuban System, or HIMIT, which is the Helmet Mounted ID targeting system. It's rudimentary in the, in the process. Total system set up about 50,000 for that helmet. Um, the F-35, which our unit is about ready to receive, that will be a $550,000 helmet taking all technology and fusing into one sensor. The HUD and all that technology is gone. It's buried inside the helmet. And that will be one helmet for one human. So when you get your helmet made, it is specifically to you. And for any reason, if you break it, or go on, it's another half million. So some really incredible technology on the horizon, but there are lots of people who can't afford a fifth generation fighter, and the situational awareness is the same for all of us. We crave more of it, and when I saw him present today, I thought about all the systems that are out there, enemy aircraft, enemy radar, friendly aircraft, and if you could take that and display it in a manner which now it becomes this almost hologram in space while you're flying in weather at night, it really gives you that kind of SSA, situational awareness, that allows you to make better decisions in a more timely manner. So from me to you, I just can't say thank you enough for all that you've done for me, and I didn't even know it, number one. Uh, number two, I'm really excited when I'm here looking at all the technology and where it's going. So I cheer you on, I applaud you, and thank you for your time. Thank you.